Okay, I'm the uh, operations manager for the Fastish project, which Natalia explained last night. For those who weren't there last night, we're looking to deploy um, high-speed broadband to around 90% of the premises within Herefordshire and Gloucestershire. So primarily it's an infrastructure project looking to deliver um, the NGA capability to businesses and communities. Um, but also, another part of my role is actually the uh, kind of project manager on Create, uh, and I work for the lead partner uh, Herefordshire Council. So really my job today is to take you through a bit more of the detail because I am aware that last night you didn't get a great deal of the detail of what Create is trying to achieve and how it's going to achieve it. So hopefully by the end of my talk you'll have a better understanding and sense of what we're looking to do. So it's always good to start at the beginning. So I thought I'd put this slide up really to give you a sense of the provenance of the project, where it's come from. And um, really it stretches back to 2009, uh, where myself and uh, a lady from Scottish Enterprise, who was meant to be coming today, Fiona, but um, hasn't uh, managed to make it down, um, had a meeting up in Ludlow um, at the Old Rural Regeneration Zone. And we were really looking to um, develop a project which stimulated uh, rural entrepreneur entrepreneurial activity and looking to do that in a transnational way so we could learn from different regions and um, develop some best practice around that. Obviously with the demise of the RDAs, some of that went by the wayside, um, certainly within England, um, but with the kind of uh, the, the new approach to broadband delivery that the government announced in 2010 and with the announcement of Herefordshire Council being a pilot uh, project for um, quite a large infrastructure project that the government has, um, has funded. The kind of the idea of working transnationally and doing something around rural entrepreneurial, entrepreneurialism, you've got to get that right, uh, um, came back to the forefront really. So we started to re-engage with some of the partners that we'd had before, including Scotland, um, including also Ireland with Magella's predecessor, um, Linda. And we had a, an initial meeting in 2011 in Brussels just to talk around some of the ideas, particularly around rural broadband and how we could um, encourage companies to optimise that, uh, 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 that benefit as it was uh, being deployed. Um, we did decide to work in partnership. We did decide to work together to um, really work up some common goals and um, get some common actions together. And we submitted our initial application to the Interreg programme uh, in 2012. That was referred back, which meant we got another bite of the cherry, um, but it also meant that we had to refine the project and redesign the application and take it back to the Interreg JTS. Um, during that period, we did lose a couple of partners, um, sadly, but we also gained some partners as well. So Ernact came um, on the scene, which we're very thank thankful for, and also West Flanders, who you, you met last night, um, joined the team as well. And the project was finally approved in May of this year. So it's been quite a long process in gestation. Um, so we do think we've got in a place where we actually all understand each other, we all understand the aims of this project and what we're looking to achieve with it. Just a, a quick word on the programme itself, Interreg uh, 4B. It's, it's targeted funding uh, and it's looking to um, uh, encourage regional collaboration. It's also looking to encourage new approaches to problems that are um, generic to, to North West Europe. And it's primarily looking at things that will, uh, or this strain of Interreg 4B, is looking to um, have an economic impact on North West Europe. So it's, it's primarily targeted at uh, projects that are looking to do that. Um, the total value of CREATE is 2.6 million euros, which sounds fantastic, but of course only half of that is ERDF funding, so the other half we're having to find ourselves as organisations, primarily through in-kind support. Um, so it's a good way for us to actually bolt onto our own activities and try and do something a bit more special, a bit more um, uh, 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 innovative. So uh, the ERDF value is 1.3 million, that's spread across six partners. Um, slightly different levels for each partner, but we all get a, um, a bite of the cherry. Um, and CREATE is actually one of the final projects to be approved through the uh, Interreg programme, or this current um, round of Interreg for this programme period. Um, I've put there, it runs through to September 2013. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> we'd have about two weeks to deliver the project. It's actually September 2015. <laughs> There's always a PowerPoint. Okay, so the aim of CREATE is to overcome the barriers to growth for rural SMEs. That's kind of clear. It's a very simple, simple aim. And really what we see are the structural deficits of the rural economy are listed there and their geographic isolation from markets and skills, particularly knowledge intensive skills. Um, a lack of infrastructure, which I think, barring West Flanders, we all, we all got a sense of last night. Um, a lack of scale of our um, 
our business uh, base. So they're a lot of a lot of them small, and they don't really co-locate particularly well. So the poor uh, clustering opportunities um, for businesses to get together and gain scale. Um, there's a lack of ICT expertise, particularly in smaller smaller businesses. So a lot of the larger businesses will have their own IT departments. Smaller businesses tend to you know, have it external or, or or don't look at it at all. Really. Um, and there's a need to diversify away from a reliance on the traditional sectors, um, particularly in terms of tourism and agriculture, but also to make those sectors more robust as well, to make them more competitive. So hopefully the provision of NGA broadband and the provision of um, advice and support on how to actually maximise the opportunity will help to make those sectors more robust as well, because they are critical to our areas. Okay, the role of NGA broadband. Obviously broadband and NGA being over 24 meg in the UK, it's over 30 meg for the um, European Union. Um, but also advanced ICT applications really have the potential to transform the productivity of rural SMEs. Um, and we'll see that, we've seen that over the last two or three years, how much things have grown, it's going to grow again and, and develop in so many different ways that none of us can actually predict. Um, what it really provides for rural areas is an opportunity to overcome those structural deficits, so particularly geographical isolation, poor clustering opportunities, lack of scale, it, it, it gives us a, a unique tool really to get over those issues and it gives us a real opportunity to reduce the urban rural divide which is obviously something that we um, have been going on for decades about. Um, there's obviously been major, major investment by the private sector particularly uh, in physical infrastructure into NGA broadband networks uh, in the UK particularly by Virgin and BT. Um, but also um, by other network providers across the uh, European Union. But also within the Interreg partnership that we have, um, the partners alone have invested a cumulative £210 million worth of funding, pounds, euros, um, more or less the same thing at the minute, uh, into NGA infrastructure as well. And that's all been predicated on um, the assumed economic growth that that will deliver at the back of it. So, it really is a justification now and a rationale built up around the way this is going to actually impact on economies. And as Graham said earlier on, it's not just to build it and they will come. We need to do something to stimulate demand for and optimisation of broadband. So the persisting issues, okay, these things are being de developed, but there's, there's obviously a high awareness, particularly in the UK, I'm sure that's the same for all of our partners really, um, of the broadband speed issue, poor speeds, poor connectivity, and the um, issues that that raises for businesses in particular. But I think there's really a low awareness of the potential once speeds are addressed, and obviously a lot of our governments are working away, beavering away to try and address those speed issues. Once that's done, what happens? And so, the poor exploitation of advanced ICT using NGA broadband networks is likely to persist, and it is persisting in some of the commercially driven areas that we see at the minute. I know at one point last year there was only a six point take up of uh, six percent take up of NGA services for um, among businesses and communities in those locations where they existed through commercial investment. So that's likely to be higher in those areas where there's increased demand, as in terms of uh, rural areas. But that's not high enough and just taking up a service is not going to do anything to drive the economy. So it really represents a significant latent economic potential and we really need to unlock that um, if we're going to drive ourselves out of this dip. Okay, so solving the issue. Um, Create's going to engage with SMEs to raise awareness of the potential for ICT and the use of NGA. Uh, and it's going to do this by um, bringing together some core principles for the stimulation of demand for ICT and, and NGA broadband amongst rural SMEs. So really the project is about understanding the best way to get the message out about um, high-speed broadband advanced ICT applications, not necessarily delivering it, although the delivery is part of this project and that's going to help us understand the messaging. We're going to deliver bespoke advice and mentoring to SMEs in the Create regions and we're also going to identify opportunities uh, for transnational collaboration. Um, and we're going to try and develop some different virtual clusters where we can get SMEs from a different, across different uh, partner regions to actually work together and gain scale. So obviously Create's aim to increase economic competitiveness in rural northwest Europe is actually underpinned by a number of objectives. Those four objectives are to understand the principles of effective demand stimulation, to develop and enhance those principles and create some demand stimulation tools and materials, to then go and deploy those tools and materials to SMEs within our localities and then to offer SMEs channels for transnational collaboration. So they're the four key things that Create are going to do. 
and they're all addressed by uh, a distinct um, work package. And the way Interreg works is uh, projects are, are assembled uh, alongside work packages and under that there's a number of different actions. So the whole project will play out around, uh, uh, around four different work packages and then 15 separate actions. So why do this transnationally? I think we heard a lot about this um, last night. It was really encouraging particularly to hear from our um, politicians um, about the value of us working together. But I think as, as partner organisations, in particular small organisations like ourselves, um, we see a lot of unique benefits in working together um, uh, with other regions. We as partners can gain the technical capacity and skills that we perhaps don't have um, within our own um, organisations. We can gain scale together. We can benefit from the technical and economic specialisms of different regions. We can test approaches across a range of different environments, and I think that's where it can be really useful in terms of um, applying these techniques over the wider um, Northwest Europe as time goes by. And we can demonstrate, really, by working together as different regions, how rural SMEs can then benefit from a global economy. There's no better way for us to demonstrate to our local businesses about the value of working to together than us as partners working together and, and, and gaining benefit from that. One thing that didn't come up um, a great deal last night was uh, the idea of smart specialisms. Now this is, I'm sure Mark Schneider will talk about smart specialisms later, I'll give them a note. Um, but they're the kind of new euro speak for uh, sectors and growth sectors for different areas. Um, and one of the things that we've tried to do with CREATE is to um, almost give it a, a, a bias towards some of the growth sectors that we have within our own um, geographical locations and try and bolster those sectors in the regions where they're not particularly strong so we can actually learn and generate um, wealth between ourselves. Um, so in terms of the partner regions, and these aren't all the case for Herefordshire, but they're not all the case for um, uh, Nieuwe either, so um, they are the green and environment, uh, environmental technologies, um, renewable energy as well, uh, the creative industries and uh, new media, security and events, particularly in Herefordshire obviously with its associations, uh, biomedics and the automotive and transport sectors. But beyond those, and they are key growth sectors, key sector specialisms, um, we have the traditional rural uh, sectors, which are common to us all. So we have agriculture and particular tourism common to us all, which we obviously need to do something to, to um, help. So as I mentioned before, um, interreg projects are broken down by work packages. So I'll try and take you through each of the, basically through each of the work packages and some of the actions, the core actions that are within each of those. So um, work package one really is the start, and this is kind of the start of work package one. Um, within work package one, we've got the launch, um, an assessment really of best practices uh, in terms of demand stimulation for broadband and ICT from across the European Union. Um, and then uh, some transnational uh, uh, events to kind of bestow that advice on some of our multipliers, so some of the organisations that we work with that work with SMEs. We're also, a kind of key element of Work Package 1 is to uh, develop a, a transnational leadership panel. Now this is a group of experts that are going to help us as primarily public bodies um, to develop some of the materials, to develop some of the good practice and to help us uh, steer the project um, from a private sector perspective and from a perspective of expertise in terms of ICT and, and uh, uh, NGA broadband. So that's something we've really got to get going on um, in terms of recruiting members to that panel uh, and also getting that panel to start helping us design the project a bit more. And, um, they will also work together to um, manage and develop the training package that we're going to need to uh, work with in later uh, work packages, which we'll kind of go on to. Then we've got work package two, and this is really to um, develop materials and um, uh, support tools, really, for us to go out and do some of the demand stimulation that we'll be doing later in the programme. It's really to enhance some of the uh, existing materials that are around in uh, Northwest Europe to use the best practice that we've identified in Work Package 1 to uh, enhance and develop those tools to make them better. Um, but also to, to give them a bias towards certain sectors, certain types of businesses, size of businesses, and also to um, early, middle and later adopters. So those businesses that are perhaps you know, ahead of the curve really in terms of um, ICT adoption, they're a section of the business community. The kind of sections that we're really interested in are the middle adopters that just need a bit of a, uh, a, a hand-holding uh, to take them through to the next kind of stage. 
and also the later adopters to really do a bit of a, an awareness campaign with them to show them exactly what the benefits are of um, uh, migrating to more advanced ICT applications. Also in Work Package 2, we'll be developing um, physical and virtual digilabs. And these will be uh, existing in virtually all of the partner regions, but they'll be taking different forms. There will be some commonality in terms of some of the equipment that will be um, within those uh, locations and uh, the commonality of branding, um, but they will be, uh, be different between them. Um, some of them will be physical uh, entities, buildings. Um, our own in Herefordshire will be a mobile facility. Um, we'll have a virtual facility as well. And these can be used by the partners, uh, by the Create Leadership Panel, by business advisors themselves, um, and the SMEs as well, um, to use to draw down resources, to test equipment, to test different ICT applications. Um, I think the interesting thing from a Herefordshire perspective is in, in us trialling a mobile facility, because obviously we want to put that out and put it within the most um, appropriate place for different business events and activities that are happening around the county, is to really test that approach against having a static facility to see which is better um, or which is more successful at actually generating demand and generating usage. But we are looking to get a high usage of those facilities all around. Um, and the partners really believe that the ability to provide um, support in a physical space will assist in uh, stimulating demand and particularly again with those um, middle and later adopters who really need to touch and feel um, things to actually take on board uh, the benefits. Also within uh, Work Package 2 we'll be developing some uh, multilingual e-guides um, in the three core languages of our partnership um, and these will be based on uh, various different uh, content to be uh, defined and um, determined by the leadership panel. But there really will be quick and easy um, videos, essentially, uh, which help uh, businesses to understand the practicalities and the implications and the benefits of using particular elements of ICT. Um, critically, then, we'll also be developing a diagnostic tool, and this will be used during Work Package 3. Uh, this will be um, uh, a, a dynamic tool which can be used for small businesses, slightly larger businesses, um, businesses in distinct sectors, so we'll be trying to tailor those to the smart specialisms that we each got in our regions, but also um, make them bespoke to early, middle and later adopters, so it's a kind of an, an easy in to understanding the benefits of ICT. Um, we want to really make sure that the uh, messages that we're putting out to the business community are tailored and they're appropriate for the audience. So a one-size-fits-all in terms of the types of business we're working with, in terms of the size of the business we're working with, uh, in, terms, in terms of the sector, and also the geographical location and uh, the cultural differences that we've got across our partnership. Um, we're going to need to take all of those into account in developing this tool, but at the heart of it will be a consistent tool that we're helping businesses to understand the benefits. Um, Core with that diagnostic tool is that it um, will encourage businesses to understand that they can improve their resilience, um, increase their efficiency, and boost their competitiveness through uh, taking up NGA broadband where it exists, but also migrating to higher levels of ICT, even where broadband doesn't exist. Then we move into work package three. And this is really we do, where we do a lot of the work on the ground, so actually with um, our own local communities and the business communities um, they're, they're in. Um, and really it's a local demand stimulation program for NGA and ICT. And we'll be using those dy dynamic uh, diagnostic tools and some of the other materials that we've developed in Work Package 2 um, to deliver diagnostic activity uh, to around 650 SMEs across the partner regions. Maybe more than that, we hope it's not less. Um, this will be delivered by local business advisors. What we want to do is maximise the reach that local providers have already got in our um, regions. Um, to do half of the job for us in essence, but also to make sure that we can provide some training, monitoring and quality assurance of those activities so we've got a consistent approach across each of the regions. Um, so that's going to be critical in there, having an oversight of some of that activity in the delivery and again referring back to a core model um, will really help us uh, generate the consistency that we need. So, um, on top of the actual diagnostic advice, uh, four of our regions want to test um, a range of different small-scale incentives, um, so primarily financial packages to encourage businesses to take on a diagnostic, to undertake a diagnostic, to generate an act action plan from that diagnostic and actually to deliver against action plan. So we can see where a business starts in this process, we can understand the journey that it needs to make to achieve its own business amb ambitions, and we can provide the support and guidance that they need to actually get there. 
Um, now it may be to actually reach that point you need some financial assistance in terms of getting equipment. Um, in Herefordshire's case it may well be uh, getting additional connectivity because we're not reaching 100% of our area with NGA broadband. And again Natalia mentioned our passport scheme uh, last night which we think is critical to this. But there'll be a number of ways in terms of uh, enticing businesses actually into the CREATE programme and giving them the support and both financial and advisorial to um, get them to where they need to be, get them to where they want to be. Primarily this will be available to SMEs that can make a contribution to economic growth. So through that diagnostic activity we'll actually understand um, what benefit they can have to our own local economies through um, the support and guidance uh, provided. Then we come on to Work Package 4, and there's a few bits in Work Package 4 that I'm not going to really mention, which are a bit around evaluation, a bit around closing conference for the, for the, for the CREATE project. But the primary focus of uh, Work Package 4 is actually developing virtual clusters. And again, if you go back to the uh, structural deficits of our rural economies, the lack of scale, the small scale businesses that we've got, um, the inability or the difficulty that small businesses have in uh, accessing specific skill sets um, to actually help their businesses grow. What we want to do is overcome some of those barriers by um, clustering and encouraging cl collaboration between businesses within different regions where the skills may exist in, in, in different parts of our project area. And it'll allow those businesses that then come across it to um, kind of get a critical mass together. Um, we're calling them cloud clusters because they'll be using obviously the cloud-based uh, resources that we'll generate in the project to actually communicate and collaborate together. Um, and we will focus on the smart specialisms, but we want this to be an organic process. So if there are clusters of businesses out there, sectors that actually you know, see a benefit to working together with us, then we'll look to um, work with them as well. In terms of the cloud clusters then, what we think it's going to provide with the SMEs who participate is really significant exposure to other regions and other countries and the markets that are in those localities. <clears throat> An opportunity to gain scale, a friendly environment to, to kind of foster open uh, innovation, to kind of exchange ideas um, in a sort of collaborative way where the, uh, perhaps local competitors aren't necessarily exposed to. Um, an opportunity to find new suppliers and new partners to help sell their products and services in those localities. And also, really uh, critical for us is um, an environment where people can transfer ideas around new processes that can be adopted to cut costs. Um, and hopefully that will increase scales, hopefully those costs, costs and exercises will be reinvested to, again to generate economic growth. In terms of the target for Work Package 4, we're looking to target and work intensively really with 70 SMEs across the, across the piece. So quite small numbers of businesses within each of our regions, but we want to work intensively with those and make sure that they get a quality experience from it. <clears throat> Up there, which I'm sure you can see really clearly, anyone? No? No. Is a lovely picture. <laughs> what, it, what it tries to show is the timeline for the CREATE project. And you'll see um, down the left hand side really is the work packages. And what it's trying to show really is there's, there's a kind of real um, uh, uh, a systematic flow to the CREATE project. And a number of interim projects kind of work on a parallel level, so the work packages work together and don't necessarily meet. Um, our work packages inform each other, so there, there is some overlap. But work package one is essentially understanding what we want to do and how we want to deliver it. That drives work package two in terms of us developing the materials that we need to go out and do the work. Work package three is about doing the work. And once we've done the work in terms of understanding the potential of businesses that we've worked with, there's an opportunity then for some of those high flyers to actually get them involved in the cluster activity where there's um, been a need identified through the diagnostic. So there's a real flow to the great project and that obviously culminates in an evaluation of the programme and long term, hopefully, sustainability, particularly of the clusters. We want those to continue um, for the long term. <clears throat> in terms of the outputs, um, these are just some of the core ones. Anyone who's seen an interreg application before will know that there are thousands of um, tiny outputs that you have to deliver for the programme, but these are the core ones. So we've got um, uh, developing the core principles for demand stimulation, so that's like a menu of the core principles, that's uh, the first major output. Um, Obviously, establishing the leadership panel is a, is a huge one for us. Um, providing the Digi Labs and the virtual hub. Um, developing the multilingual e guides is another uh, major output. The, the critical one, from my perspective, really, is, is getting this multilingual diagnostic tool. So, generating all the best practice from all around Northwest Europe, pulling that together and getting a, a tool that can really work dynamically with the different types of businesses we'll be exposed to. 
Um, aligned to that, we'll be developing a smart app um, which will, people will be, be able to access, which will um, be a kind of microcosm of the diagnostic tool, so people can access that um, at a distance and remotely and do some of this diagnostic activity themselves without having that um, uh, fairly intensive interface with a uh, business advisor. Um, we want to do the 650 diagnostics, and we hope that um, half of those will actually go on to implement the actions that we've identified with those diagnostics and actually lead to economic growth within our regions. Uh, we'll be testing and piloting those four incentive types. Um, we hope that 100 SMEs are going to benefit from those and obviously will um, benefit in terms of learning lessons of, of the different types of activities that really work in terms of encouraging businesses to participate. Um, and then we're looking for at, th at least three cloud clusters, but there is, there is really no limit to that. So however many clusters that we that want to establish themselves, we will help support and we're hoping that 70 businesses will participate in that. In terms of the long-term benefits, we see that there'll be a greater uptake of NGA broadband by SMEs, particularly where it exists, obviously where it exists. Um, there'll be a continued use of SET, ICT services uh, and processes by the SMEs that have actually participated within the CREATE uh, project. And we hope that they then go on and really exploit the greater bandwidth that we as public partners are, are providing, and also with the private sector support as well. Um, we obviously hope that it's going to increase the economic growth potential um, of, of, of all our economies, really, strengthen our rural economies, strengthening the northwest European economy. Um, and we hope also that there's going to be a continuation of those networks that we've developed, particularly among the partnership, but also with the clusters themselves. Um, we hope also, and we'll hear a, li a little bit from Mark later, about um, how the lessons we learn in CREATE can actually then be applied to the future European programme. Um, and how we can actually extend some of the benefits that we've um, developed through this project and some of the best practices we've developed into the new European programme period so we can mainstream some of this work um, and help support um, uh, NGA broadband in particular where it's been deployed. Just a couple more slides really. Um, in terms of the uh, role of Herefordshire Council in this project, we're, we're the lead partner, we're the secretariat for the project. Um, again, another diagram which you can't, probably can't read, uh, slightly small. Um, that gives you a sense of the, the kind of wider team that are working on CREATE. Um, you'll see a kind of, they're all purple um, hexagonals, but on the right-hand side, those that are within a blue um, square are really the delivery partners, so that's where the work's happening. So you can see each of the partners there, um, Herefordshire, um, Ernact, Nievra, uh, who's next? Oh, West Flanders, uh, Scottish Enterprise, and Midwest uh, Regional Authority. We're all there uh, on the ground. It's not that bad, Tracy, is it? <laughs> We're all there on the ground doing the work. Um, but behind that, there's a big support structure. So um, in terms of um, communications, ERNACT are obviously our communications managers, so they're helping in that regard. We've got the FL FLCs who are doing some of the audit responsibilities that we've got um, as a managing authority. Um, we have finance officers that are working with the claiming and payment processes. Um, we have a steering group of the core partners that are actually managing the whole project. Um, and you'll see at the top there, there's a, there's a kind of function that we're looking to influence European policy. So we'll be trying to get some of the messages out about uh, the good practices that we're generating out to a wider European audience in the hope that actually that influences and stimulates um, change at a European level. Um, that's just a slide outlining um, each of our um, responsibilities as, as a accountable body, which is relatively boring, so I won't put you through that. So in summary, um, there are huge opportunities to develop businesses in rural areas. ICT and NGA, where it exists, can create resilience, competitiveness and efficiency amongst rural SMEs. Sector clusters don't have to be geographically co-located. Advancement of ICT and broadband mean that we can do this a, on a different level. Um, and gain scale off the back of it. By cooperating, SMEs can gain scale, access new markets and skills, and by working transnationally, us as partners can share experience and collaborate, developing new approaches to the problems that persist in our areas. And that's me. Thank you.